My name is Lel Pavey, this is Break Magazine, and you're watching another awesome Mini Tip Monday. Last week on Mini Tip Monday, we did a Dakar themed special on how to read road books. If you haven't seen that, this way, click the little uh, link up there. For this week on Mini Tip Monday, we're doing the same thing. We're going in and looking at something that we can learn from the Dakar. And this week, we're talking about toolkits. Now, one of the beautiful things about racing and the Dakar in general is that that environment forces you to adapt and change and solve problems while still always keeping performance in mind. When we ride, when we travel and we ride with adventure, we normally got quite a lot of luggage space. When you have space, you will fill it. With Dakar bikes, they're always still trying to keep the performance really, really high. And that means they're trying to keep the weight low so they don't carry any excess. There's no panniers, there's not lots of bag space. And so you need to fit a really good toolkit onto that bike without having a lot of space to deal with. So you're trying to fit tools into nooks and crannies and under seats and in bash plates. But alongside that, you still have the problem of you need to be able to work on your bike. You need to be able to solve a huge range of problems from tire blowouts to broken chains and pretty much everything up to working inside an engine. You probably, if you get to the point in Dakar where you've blown the inside of your engine, you're probably out of the race, but there's been plenty of instances where there's been engine changes and other serious, serious mechanical issues that needed solving, which means you need to be able to carry all those tools to do that. So in front of me on the table here, I've got a Dakar toolkit from uh, Dakar 2015. This is my personal toolkit. With this, you can dismantle the entire KTM rally bike, pretty much give or take a few extra parts that I don't have anymore. And that includes fixing chains. That includes changing a tire if I needed to change a tire, getting wheels out, solving electrical problems. You can do it all with this toolkit. The bulk of the start of this toolkit is uh, we started with a Motion Pro T6 chain tool. The beauty of this chain tool is it comes in a really nice bag, but it also has really, really good flexibility. And then we expanded that with a bunch of other parts. So in there, I've got an electrical tester. This got plenty of real world use. They're awesome little, it's basically a really simple electrical tester that has a little light bulb in it. So when you've got a positive connection, you earth it there, bang, you touch, it lights up, you know that you've got a, uh, you've got some electrical signal at that point. It's really good for tracing problems. So second up in here, we've got, we've managed to jam in a row of quarter drive tool parts. So quarter drive tools are kind of quite often overlooked, but the beauty of quarter drive is that it is really small. So you can carry a wide range of sizes and stuff to fit without taking up a lot of space. Now, sometimes, especially on adventure bikes, you'll find that parts, are, the torque levels are really high or the bolts are a bit big for that sort of thing. But you'd be amazed what you can do with a quarter drive toolkit, especially if you get a really sturdy one. So in here as well, what this toolkit is all about, we've got a chain breaker. So with this chain breaker, the standard Motion Pro, Motion Pro toolkit, you can break anything up to a 520 chain and you can refit rivet links with it. It's an awesome little piece of, uh, piece of equipment. If it's on with this piece, it gives you the leverage you need to break the chain, awesome. Cheeky little set of pliers. Really, really good for electrical things. Plenty strong enough for cutting zip ties and tape and that kind of thing. And they're really, really small. There's our quarter drive ratchet. Get a little snap on one. A great little tool, really strong. Snap on lasts a long time. And in there, we've got a full complement of screwdriver pieces as well, Allen keys. So between that, we've got pretty much all the sizes of tool that we need. KTM also required us to have a 17 mil socket. So we've got a little 3 8 drive adapter here with a 17 mil socket on it. That's also made by Motion Pro, that little adapter. So it fits straight onto a quarter drive tool. It's really, really nice. And in here, we also have a couple of other little sockets that just go in here. A few little Torx pieces that are really specific to the KTM. So if you ride something else, this is kind of where you need to change your toolkit up for yourself, but you can totally get all these bits in quarter drive. And for the most part, unless you're talking something that's like a bolt that's under like 18 Newton meters of torque, you can do a huge amount with quarter drive. There's just a bunch of other little tools in there that aren't really too important. This is another really, really cool tool, one tire lever. Now with a little bit of practice, you can change a tire with one tire lever and something like a 17 mil spanner, that's more than enough to change a tire, that's more than enough to get a tube in and get yourself out of trouble. Another nice little tip from Dakar bikes, duct tape, duct tape is awesome. So we've wrapped a little bit of duct tape around a Motion Pro tire lever, which also has a 27 mil spanner, 27, 24, something like that. It's the same size as the rear spindle was on our bike. Now, if you can't get one like this, where the tire lever has the right size spanner on the end of it, you can also just buy a steel tire lever, angle grind the end off and weld on the appropriate socket. 
It works perfectly well. It's really, really useful to combine a tool like that. It still gives you the leverage you need to get something like your rear wheel off or your front wheel out, but in one tool. A tool like this is awesome because it can be zip tied onto the frame of your bike. It can be put completely out of the way doesn't need to take up valuable space elsewhere. The beauty of this Motion Pro tool as well is that it's made of aluminium, so it is incredibly light. It weighs no more than 200 grams. It's not adding anything to your bike. Also, I, I quite like to carry a screwdriver, so this one's double-ended. It covers a nice Phillips head and a flat blade. It covers a lot of different parts on, on your bike. Zip ties, again, a really, really essential tool. It depends on the bike you ride, but I quite often zip tie these to the top of a fork leg. Two zip ties around the fork leg and you can fit 20 zip ties below that. Another good place is on your handlebars. You always use zip ties when you're traveling and when you're racing and having them to hand like that is really, really nice. And the last part of the toolkit I always carry, you, you need one of these, is some form of multi-tool slash knife. This one is taken from a Moto Hansa toolkit, but any kind of, any kind of knife like that is really, really good. Quite often I, again, zip tie the holder for this somewhere really, really ex accessible. So like a good place would be on a fork leg or in the fairing somewhere. Somewhere you'll be amazed how often you use this. So having it accessible is really nice. I think one of the big takeaways from Dakar toolkits for me is that there are tools out there that will get the job done that you need to do. They'll let you do your regular maintenance, your oil changes, and they'll let you solve all those problems that you have on the side of the track without taking up a third of your pannier, half your pannier. You don't need 40 kilos of tools, especially if you don't have the mechanical know-how to solve them. The main things you need to be able to do, you need to be able to change punctures, fix chains, and change your oil and air filter. And if you can do those four things, the likelihood, apart from an electrical problem, the likelihood of you needing to solve those things on the track in the middle of nowhere is pretty low. So if you can get your bike apart and you can get it back together and you can change those four things, there isn't a huge amount else that you need to be carrying. One of the biggest mistakes I think people make with toolkits as well is that they carry way too many of the same tool. This is a good example. You only need one tire lever and a decent spanner to change a tire. So I don't need to carry four massive tire levers. Four massive tire levers will weigh five kilos. And by the time you add five kilos of this and five kilos of that, you've added 25 kilos worth of tools to your panniers and it makes a huge difference to how your bike handles. Putting panniers on alone makes a big difference to how your bike handles in a negative way, and so does adding weight, and if we don't need to add weight, why would we? So along with that and some zip ties and the tools that we have right here, the only other things you need to add to your toolkit are two-part metal. It's a kind of chemical metal that can be used to solve incredible problems from broken engine cases to broken clutch perches and pretty much everything in between. You, you can do everything that you can come up with in your mind using two-part metal. And the, uh, the last bit to add to your toolkit is just bike-specific parts. So maybe if you've got a really kind of complex oil filter, you might need an oil filter removal tool and a few other little bits like that. But otherwise, I think this is a really good example of how to keep a toolkit small, compact, light, and really, really effective at the same time. If you've got any questions about other things you, you are unsure of with your toolkits, whether it's parts to carry or things that you need to know how to learn to do, throw a comment down below. We're gonna be around in the comments all evening, so you'll uh, ask your questions and we'll do our best to solve them. And otherwise, remember guys, life's better when you're riding.